Lord, we want to thank you for our families. Lord, we want to thank you because you are trying to call for our attention. And Lord, we, we want to learn, Lord Father. And we know that self is all, always on the way. So we want you, Lord, to reveal to us the principles of godly living, godly, godly relationships in our marriages, with our children also. We want you to remove the blindness of self before our eyes so we can see. We ask for your Holy Spirit to be present here to keep us alert and to gain an understanding that we can be utilizing in a practical way in our lives. In this is holy and precious name. Amen. What we are going to share with you is um, some principles that when we, when we actually came across them, it was in a way revolutionary. All of a sudden we, uh, we understood what was happening and the main thing that was happening is that I, couldn't, I could not understand my wife and she could not understand me. That was the basis of our problem, wasn't it? And you know why? She's a lady, and I'm a man. So we are all different. For those that have children, you can tell that the boys play with the wheels while the girls play with something else. They're different. They, the, the communication skills, the way they communicate is different. And um, I'm going to share, for instance, I illustrate what we mean by that. There was this, this, this wife that cooked some beans. And see, Obe cooked these beans a little bit. They had visitors for dinner. The visitors came, they ate the dinner, and as they left, husband and wife, they were just collecting the dishes and took the dishes to the kitchen. And the wife said to the husband, these ones must be the worst beans I ever cook. And the husband says, no, dear, that's not true. Now, she looks at him and says, what do you mean? <laughs> oh, I'm just saying that that's not true. Oh, oh so, so you mean that I cook worse beans than this? No, that, that's not what I mean. What I mean is that they were not that bad. Well, next time, you cook the beans. Now, can you see the problem? We have a communication problem, isn't it? We do have a communication problem. I'm just going to share with you this. You want to read it for us? It reads, How many dishonor Christ and misrepresent his character in their home circle? How many do not manifest patience forbearance, forgiveness, and true love. How, ma how many have their likes and dislikes and feel at liberty to manifest their own perverse dispositions rather than to reveal the will, the works, the character of Christ. The life of Jesus is full of kindness and love. We are, growing into, are we growing into his divine nature? As couples, as husband and wife, do we see ourselves um, growing in Christ's nature as we should be? As, as, as a church, as we are, as a family? Um, we came to the point and I realized that we went. Um, and Oscar was pushing to one side and I was pushing to another side. And, and uh, you read, we read, you know, we all know the verses in the Bible when we said, Especially myself when said, wives submit to your husbands. And um, as we get in the world, why doesn't he have to respect me as well? <laughs> um, but the Bible says, wives submit to your husbands. And uh, at the beginning, it was, that was hard for me. Um, um, because I thought, I am a person too. You know, that was because of the Bible times... Uh, 
how it was, you know, back then the culture, this is different today. You know, uh, we have a say, we have our lives. Um, but the Lord worked, you know, and still is working because uh, I, there's so much of self in me. Um, but, you know, he's trying to work with us. And we, we're going to, you know, what we're sharing today, it's, it's um, I don't know, it's, it's a little bit something, you know, uh, but it's just so we can, it can help us to, to see and to realize uh, what God wants us to do. Why, you know, why is God asking me to submit to my husband? Why is he, is he asking me to respect him? And why is, uh, is he asking the husbands to do what? To love the wives, right? Why is he asking the husbands to love the wives? And why is he asking the wives to? Respect. God, um, nowhere in the Bible we can find that uh, a wife should love the husband. I don't know, if, have you ever seen in the Bible a verse that says, wife, you should love your husband? Anyone? We won't find it there. It's not there. Do you, do you ask yourself why? Because the reason is God created us, women, to love. On our nature, we love. We are mothers. God created us as mothers. So it just comes naturally. We just are, we're loving, you know. So God doesn't expect, he doesn't ask us to love our husbands. But it's not in our nature to respect them. And that's why he's asking us to do that, to respect him. Uh, so many times, and I, I know I still do. And the thing, as, as Oscar was sharing, you know, this morning uh, in the sermon, how the children see what, you know, in, the, in our eyes, in our actions, see, and they learn from us. Uh, so many mistakes that I, as a wife, have made because of not respecting my husband. Um, uh, either, either by, you know, when he corrects the children, I think he's too harsh. Uh, and I said, oh, you know, they all, you know, it wasn't that bad. And I, I tried to take the side. I'm thinking I'm doing the correct thing. But am I really doing the correct thing? Am I really le- letting him, him be the father and, the, and, you know, the patriarch, the leader of the house? Uh, I, see, I see God put him there. Um, and then I see my children, my eight-year-old, he... Uh, Father says something to him, and, and he reacts back to him, and, and the Lord is now working with me and showing me, do you see yourself in that child? Is he doing, you know, is he reacting to his father the way that you as a wife are, are, are doing? And, I, and, and, you know, and then I said, yes, and it, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart to see that I don't want my, hus- my child to react to my husband the way he shouldn't be, and then I realized that it's because of me. When I, it's, a, it's amazing, not because, you know, uh, I am a woman and, and, I, and I love the way that, you know, what God has given me, the responsibility he has given me, but sometimes it's true, I do need to keep my mouth shut. And, uh, and let my husband uh, make mistakes and, and pray for him. That's what we have to do as ladies. We have to just pray for our husbands. When we see the making mistakes, I have to, and, and it's hard for me, I tell you, to not, you know, just to close my mouth and, and just pray. Put him high, especially in front of the children. Never to, you know, I, I always, you know, he's done something and gone, oh, you know, why did you do this? And, and that's something that the Lord, I have to, we have to, our, 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 our roles as parents, the husband as well, but as we as wives, we have to, this is sacred. God created the marriage sacred. And uh, we, we have to put our husbands as, as high as Christ. They, that's what we're, they're representing, aren't they? So we have to uh, respect them. And, and as I said, sometimes, you know, and not say anything, and let the Lord work. It's interesting. We are going to share these a couple of verses here. In Colossians 3, 18, 21, says, Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting 
in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. And in Ephesians 5, 22 to 25, says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and it is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. As we are going to start unpacking this, we will hope for you to see that God has placed in the husband and wife relationship the image of God inside the house so our children can have a clear understanding of who God is and a clear understanding of what their own duties are towards God and the answer towards God. See, as, as I visit people, it's interesting because you pretty much find the same responses out of this particular situation that I'm going to, to describe to you right now. Husband comes to the house, just went to Bunnings, just got some things to do in the house, and he's just going to put this nice picture on the wall. So he is into it. He just walk into the shed, just get the drill, you know, power tool, just get the drill, gets everything, gets everything is ready to make the hole on the wall and to put the picture. Now, wife is in the kitchen. She is chopping some onions, and she could see the situation, you know, like, it's just a small picture after all. But she already saw that this guy is already in the shed and he's bringing out the, the drill and everything. And she's thinking, well, in Bunnings, you can get one of these sticking hooks, you know, to place a picture. And she's wondering, will that be necessary? I mean, she's just going, he's just going to make a big mess in the house. Who is going to clean this dust? Now, this guy is ready, has the belt on, drill, you know, he is into it. He's on a mission. He's the man. He's on a mission. The wife is just in the kitchen and she's going to say something. The first thing is she's staring at the wall and as I'm talking, I'm sure husbands, you can relate to this. She's staring at the wall. The husband is just there, just looking the situation and as he grabs the drill, the wife says, do you, show, do you know what you're doing? I hear some laughter here. Can we all rely? Do you, do you know what you're doing? Yeah. Of course, I know what I'm, doing, what I'm doing. Now, let me tell you, not all the time the husband knows what he's doing. But he's showing something. He's showing what? He's showing that he's the husband. I am the man with the drill here, okay? All right. So he's about to do it. Wouldn't it be better just to go to Bunny's and get one of those sticking hook, hooks there? I know what I'm doing. Can, you, can we relate to the situation? Another one that we can think of is husband is driving, wife is next next to him in the passenger seat. And it's getting dark. And this husband, though he has a GPS, he doesn't want to use it. And the wife says, do you know where you're going? And the husband says, of course I know where I'm going. He has no idea. No idea where he's going. But let me tell you, the last thing that he wants to hear is, did you know what you're doing? Now, the wife is just trying to, to get a feedback that we're not going to get lost. We're not going to, to just be in the middle of nowhere or having to go into a hotel and pay $200 for the night just because we got lost and you didn't want to use the GPS. The husband is saying, you are not respecting me. You are putting me down. And as we share these principles, 
we realized that there is a will, and it's called God's will. And if we look at uh, to that, do you wanna? I'll read the first the first one. You read the next one. He says, God says, husbands love your wife. Husbands love your wife, as he loves his wife. The wife reacts. The way the wife reacts is by respecting the husband. When she respects the husband, he reacts. And the way he reacts is by loving the wife. The self-willed is quite different. The husband does not show love. Now, we know we love our wives, don't we, husbands? We love our wives, but that's not what he's saying, isn't it? It's not loving your wives. It's, it's, what is it? It's showing that you love them. As you are showing that you love your wife, she will react. And the way that she will react will be by showing respect to the husband. As she is showing respect to the husband, he will react by loving more the wife. Can you see this picture? Can you see this picture? It's just a circle. Uh, we respect them, and uh, they, will love, they will love us. Um, but then again, we also have to learn uh, how, you know, because yes, Oscar tells me that he loves me, but uh, I, don't, I don't feel it sometimes. And uh, that's something that I think men also need to maybe understand the, the concepts of, you know, us women, and we need to understand how, how men, uh, maybe not how men think, but, um, but you know, how, how, how God created men and women so differently. And even, you know, uh, it's been proven, we could say, uh, with this, this statistic, we know in America, everything they have. Um, what's it called? Um, a survey. They got a survey for everything and statistics for everything. Um, and we came across uh, a friend. A friend of us came across this book on couples and relationships and how men think and women think different. How different we are. And just you know to solve communication problems, they did these surveys. Um, with men and women, and uh, they started with, with children, eight-year-olds. They put um, eight boys, or four boys, in a room with, uh, with, with four chairs, you know, all looking at the wall. And they put the, the, uh, the, the boys there. The boys went into the room. They didn't even sit, sit in the chairs. One in one corner, one in the other one, just, you know, there were some toys there. They put some toys. And every now and then, you know, they would throw things at each other, and there were a few words. Uh, then they did the same thing with 16-year-old boys, four chairs, everything the same. The, the teenagers sat in the chairs, all looking straight at each other. They're going, why are we here? Like, you know, what's this all about? And they started um, talking to each other, but in a, you know, in a very casual uh, way. Uh, but then after the, the, the time went, they got into really deep conversations. Then they put 35-year-olds, exactly the same. They sat in the chair. They started communicating, just chatting. But then, uh, and then they did the same thing with women. They put girls, 8-year-old girls, they put in the room, four chairs. The first thing the girls did, went, grabbed the chairs, did a circle, and they started chatting and chatting to each other. Uh, they put 16-year-old girls, the same thing. They moved the chairs together so they could be face-to-face. -face, and uh, they started, you know, talking uh, about the girlfriends, about what they did, and, you know, how's the mom. And, how's... and the, with the women, the same thing. But they came to, you know, they saw the conclusion of, of all this is how women need that face-to-face -face, uh, conversation. You know, they, that's, it's essential for us. Whereas men, 
they could be next to each other, they could be in the kitchen, and they're having like a good talk, you know, they could go to a really deep conversation, and for them that's, you know, we've, we've done, you know, we've communicated, but for us, for, for us ladies, we need that, you know, face to face, we need to talk, that's our quality time. They think they, they, they spend time with us and say, no, 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 you haven't given me time, you haven't, you know, we, and that's where we need to learn, you know, us, we need to, you know, understand them and and they need to sort of uh, give us the time that we need. Well, how many times wife comes home, uh, wife, you, you sit in on the sofa, wife comes, looks at, at you on the eyes and say, husbands, we never talked anymore. We never talk anymore. We, we lo- I think we are in a deep, deep crisis. We never talk anymore. And husband is thinking, what do you mean? We, we were watching a movie last night. We were just sitting here, and we, we talked. No, no, no. We never talked. And the husband is convinced. He's fully convinced. We're talking. We're talking here. What do... Can you see the difference? There is a tremendous difference in that. The Lord is saying to the wives, submit, the ha- to, submit to the husbands. The, the Lord is not saying to the wives, love the husbands. Why? Because that comes natural to the wives. What does not come natural? Submit. So if it, not, if it doesn't come natural, natural to her or to them, what does that mean? That they need somebody else, isn't it, to make it natural. They need the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is showing to married couples the dying to self message by asking the husbands to love their wives and showing them that you love them. Why? Because that does not come natural to husbands. Husbands will say, well, she knows I love her. When was the last time that you told her that? Well, she knows I love her. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't come natural. A husband will go give a kiss to the wife and turn on the computer and sit down in the computer for two hours. According to him, I show love to her. I gave her a kiss as I walk in. Can you see that it doesn't come natural? So because it doesn't come natural to the husband, what is the Lord saying? The Lord is saying, you don't have it. Husband, you don't have that love for your wife. You need me. Wife, you don't don't have that respect for your husband. You need me. So the dying to self message is encapsulated in those verses that we just read in Colossians 3 and Ephesians 5. So when we take those verses and we manipulate them into a, into a um, feministic approach or into a macho approach, we're actually distortionating an image that the Lord wants to reflect in our houses to our children. And how is that image represented? It's, um, I, I think, it's, now it's when we need the relationship with Christ. I think it's, it's, Trying to, um, um, you know, have know the voice of God, and you know, have you know, know that the thought that's coming from Him, it's you know, every everything good comes from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, like I, I'll, I'll ex- explain. I've, I was Oscar was uh, st- studying or doing um, a paper uh, for uh, college, and he was sitting in the sofa. And uh, I was doing homeschool with the three little ones. I had uh, Nicholas uh, doing some science, and Eva is just learning to read, so I was trying, you know, I was with her. And then the little one, Amaya, comes and she wants to, um, she wants to listen to her phonograms. And uh, Dad was right, like, led, right in front of the CD track, and uh, he was sort of right there. And... Um, and I was sort of busy on the floor with the, with every, with the other two. So I said to Amaya, go ask Daddy to put the, the CD on for you and, give you, and you can grab the, the cards uh, yourself. And uh, she went to Dad and uh, she said, Daddy, can you put the CD on? And Dad says, um, I'm busy. Um, and this is me at the back. I'm going... Okay, as if I'm not busy. <laughs> like, I've got two of me, and you know, he can't just, this is all goes in my head, of course. Uh, can he just, you know, just 
just put the books aside, put the CD, that's all he has to do is just put the CD on and she'll be happy. And I, she said, oh, and so she said to me, mom, please, you know, put the CD on. I said, and I said, just ask him, ask him. So I said, I just, I was, at this point, I was really getting impatient. Um, and she went up again to dad and she said, dad, you know, can I put the, can you put the CD on? And she said, um, oh, later, later, she said, wait a minute, he said. And uh, I knew, like inside, I knew this, this minute would be, you know, half an hour. So I, then I really started, you know, I really started getting frustrated. Oh, you know, how can, you know, why can't he, you know, just get up and do it, you know, and everybody will be happy. And then, and then I heard a little voice and I said, is, is that, you know, is, is that, are you, is that a right for you to get upset for, you know, for this? And, uh, and I'm thinking inside, well, yes, you know, I can't expect, he can't expect me to do everything, you know. I'm, sh I'm sure he can, you know, he has time, you know, to put that CD for her. It's n I'm not asking something big. And then I hear another thought in my head and say, um, it's, it's all right, you know, just, does it take you time? You know, can you get up and put the CD? And I didn't want to, I didn't want to, and I said, just, just do it. Uh, so I got up, I put the CD to my daughter, I went back and I, I was with the other children and, um, and then I was upset with Oscar, in my, with my thoughts. And, and, you know, just the Lord slowly just putting thoughts, you know, um, like, he's, he's not that bad, like, you know, this is something little. And as, you, as, you, as we give these little uh, thoughts that are not ours really, it's the enemy putting these thoughts in our in ourselves so we can be separated, you know, in spirit. So it's by just giving these thoughts to the Lord and getting, you know, the good things that he will put in us, that's how we sort of, I think the practical sense comes when we die to self. And, you know, we, we do what is going to be good for the others and, you know, not mainly for ourselves. It's interesting because the Bible says that he who is faithful in the little things... And there's not such a, there's not such, there's not better place for the little things than in the home. The dishes, the CD player, the daddy give me time, should we go for a walk? Friends, those are the little things. But he who is faithful in the little things will be faithful in much. Now, as the husband shows love, to the wife. The children are seeing the image of God towards humanity. Did you catch that? As the, fa the father, that, that is the representative of Christ in the home, shows love, shows love to the wife. The children are seeing w the real character of God. Now, you cannot fool that child. You cannot say that God is angry. You cannot say to that child that God is vengeous, that God is upset all the time. You cannot fool that child if the husband is showing love in the home, isn't it? He will have a picture of God and the character of God towards humanity. God loves us. And no matter what everybody else tells me, my father has shown me who God is in his character. As the wife submits to the husband, wives, the child is seeing Jesus Christ submitting to the Father. Did you catch that? As the wife submits to the husband, the child is seeing how Jesus Christ submits to the Father. So in husband and wife, the Lord has given the picture of heaven for us to understand, for our children to see. They can see clearly how God loves us, and they can see clearly the sacrifice of Jesus for humanity. Did you catch that? That is crucial. One day, Veronica said something that I didn't like in the kitchen. And I just hold it in there. I wouldn't trust my mouth at that, at that point, so I just left. And that's, by the way, what husbands tend to do. We just shut down and it's okay, don't worry, so I'll take off. I just left. I just went to the bedroom. 
And I'm going to tell you what went through my mind in one second of time. So for what I'm going to tell you now lasted only about one second. The time that it took for me to sit down on my bed and rise up again. That, that one second. And this is what it went through my mind. Are you going to enter into the other circle? I said, what? No, it was hurtful. I mean, I'm not, I'm not buying this. Not this time. It was hurtful. Okay, are you entering into that circle, wasn't it? Lord, it was hurtful. I'm not going again to say sorry. It was hurtful. She will have to say sorry. You are my son, my beloved son. Do you want your children to see Jesus? Yes, Lord. Do you want your children to see me? Yes, Lord. Get up and say sorry. But Lord, it was her fool. Get up and say sorry and say it in the good way. Do you know the bad way of saying sorry? I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> if I, if, look, I won't do it for now. Look, if that offended you, if me turning the computer offended you, okay, I'll just go to call Telstra. You know, we finished with the broadband today. You know, we just take measures, you know, we just. No, the Lord said not, say it in the good way. And let me tell you, from my bedroom, and we not live in a, in a big house, from my bedroom, all the hall, passing the living room to the kitchen, the Lord broke my heart in such a way that by the time I arrived in the kitchen, I was in tears. The amazing thing is that the Lord had already worked on my wife's heart at the same time. And right after, I said sorry, she said sorry, and we all cried and hacked. And what could have been a long, long pride process of hours and hours, contam contaminating the atmosphere of the home, contaminating our own children, was a victory for Jesus Christ, rather than a victory for the devil. And that is exactly what the Lord wants. He wants our children to see that we are not ruled by pride. We're not ruled by self. But we are going to do the things that we don't like to do just because the Lord is our Savior and He wants to teach us and our children something. I want you to read this principle with me. This is, I think this, uh, before we go in there, I think this uh, is something very... Uh touchy and I think especially I don't know about men because I, I, I'm, when the men are talking I never go into the circle but uh, when uh, women normally when we, we start chatting uh, we fall into this uh, and it's when, when we learned it it's something that uh, I, I said whoa it's, it's something so sacred marriage is so sacred that we have to be so careful of what we say you know let's, let's read it he reads, there is a sacred circle around every family which should be preserved. No other one has any right in that secret circle. The husband and wife should be all to each other. The wife should have no secrets to keep from her husband and let others know. And the husband should have no secrets to keep from his wife to relate to others. The heart of his wife, the heart of, of, of his wife should be the grave for the faults of the husband, and the heart of the husband, the grave for his wife's faults. Never should either party indulge in a joke at the expense of the other's feelings. Never should either, of the, either the husband or wife, in a sport or in any other manner, complain of each other to others. For frequently indulging in this foolish and what it seems perfectly harmless joking, will end in a trial with each other and perhaps entrenchment. I have been shown that there should be sacred shield around every family. Do you understand what we just read? How many times uh, us as ladies, we're talking and uh, you know, so something comes up and we say, oh yeah, you, know, you should have seen what Oscar did. You know, he's, 
you are so foolish, you know. And and then another one, another one said, oh well, you you don't know about Angelo, like, or you know, I'm just generally generally. But we fall into that, and uh, and it's it's sacred. When I, when I when we learned this, uh, we said, whoa, you know, it's like, you know, we've been committing sin really because God sanctified the family, you know, the, the, the relationship, the husband and wife. And here we are sort of spreading, it's like spreading around, you know, what Oscar's doing wrong and, or, and vice versa. Uh, when we should encourage each other, you know, we should consecrate each other, help each other. And, uh, and I, can't, I don't think I can stress enough the fact that we as as mothers, as wives, have such a big influence or responsibility in our children in respect on how we treat our husbands. Um, lately, you know, the, always the thought comes to my, my mind when I'm going to say something against him or say something that he does not deserve. Uh, it comes to my head, and I know it comes from the Lord. I he said, he's, he's representing me. So... If you say something against him, it's as if you're saying something against me. And when you think of that, it's like, whoa, like, then it's like, it's, it, stops, it stops us, you know, from saying something because we would never say something against Jesus, would we, or God. And that's why they are there for, you know, God put them there. So we have to be really, really careful, uh, ladies. And um, this, the Lord is talking to me right now as well because uh, it's... It's we're teaching the children on how we behave in front of them. It's interesting because it's all about faith. When the Lord asks the husband to show love, when the Lord shows, says to the husband, show love to your wife, what he's actually implying is that you do this and she will respect you. Now, what is the husband's biggest desire? To be respected in the house. Can somebody show me some respect in this house? To be respected. How is the Lord going to, sh to give him the desires of his heart? By him loving the wife. Now, this requires faith, isn't it? Because the husband says, okay, Lord, I'm just going to take this on board. I'm just going to show love to my wife and my children. A week later, Lord, I'm doing my part. She's not respecting me. <laughs> the wife says, okay, Lord, I'm just going to keep a masha. Uh, if he wants to bring a bulldozer to hang a picture on the wall, he can bring the bulldozer. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to bring an orange juice and say, there you go, dear. You know, you're doing such a, such a good job there. After a week, the guy is not changing. Lord, Talk to him louder, because he's not showing any love to me. Do you see how it requires faith? The results might not just come just like that. I mean, you need an agreement, first of all, right? If you tell it to the Lord, tell it to your husband also, you know? So you, you just go to your husband and say, will you pray for me? Why is that? I'm just trying to respect you more. He will love it. He will Honestly, pray hard. Honestly, true, try it. Try it. Uh, believe it or not, it works. Believe it or not, it works. And, and even while you're doing that, you know, just in, in, encourage him. You know, uh, um, it's amazing what, just a little comment, you know, when he's, because he's, he's used to me hearing my voice saying, honey, you sure you, you want, why don't we put this over there? Or, you know, why don't we, you know, why don't you show Nicholas, you know, this way? Or, He's always, you know, listening to that. And when I started applying this and, uh, and I said, oh, wow, you know, you're doing a great job. And he, you'd see this big smile on him. And, uh, and I would get an affection back, you know. Uh, I'd get my massage and I would get my cuddles. And, you know, it's, it's rewarding, honest. Delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And that's actually what happens. I'll tell you, you know, when my wife just touches, I'm just doing something. You know, I'm a bit of a frustrated handyman, you know. I, lo I love it. I'm not that good at it. But I'm always doing something, you know. I'm, my drills, my hammer, I'm just always doing something. Uh, 
But when my wife passes by and says, oh, that looks good. Just that, I'll tell you. Whew. Isn't that, that way better than, what are you doing that for? <laughs> do, we, do we really need that? What a waste of timber. And the other way also. One day I came home, I was exhausted. And I remember this time because probably I haven't been exhausted this way for a long time. I just went home, I arrived home, I said hello to everybody, gave a lovely kiss to everybody, and I just sat on the sofa. I just like, I was exhausted. And you know, people say, how do you say that the Lord talks to you? I don't know. But you know when the, when the Lord is talking. <laughs> you don't know how he does it, how he put, put thoughts in your mind and your conscious, conscience, but you know he's the Lord. Because no other than the Lord will tell you when you're so exhausted, get up off that sofa and would you give a hand to your wife to do the dishes? And I'm like, Lord, not today. The thing is that the Lord spoke to my heart and said, do you have no idea what days he had? Lord, I had a terrible day. Yes, you had no idea what days he had. It just happened to be that he had a very, very terrible day. It was one of those days, you know, that women have with the children in the house and nothing appears to, to be right and nothing appears to be on time and, and the, the food is not ready on time and I'm just running behind and she had one of those days. I had a terrible day also. But I'll tell you what. I decided to deal myself to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm exhausted. I'm going to do the dishes. I said, remember, do it the, the good way. Because there's a nasty way to do the dishes also. You know, when you when all the all the doors of the of the cabinet of the cabinets, you know, are very noisy, you know, like <clears throat> and, <clears throat> and you put in all the dishes and it's very noisy, just to make sure that the whole house understands that though you are tired, though you had a long day, you still have to call, come to your house and do the dishes and pack them up. That's not a good way. And I'll tell you, I remember that day. And it was a lovely evening. We had everything done by 5.30. We were able to sit down, to talk, to to worship with the kids. We went early to bed, and we have a lovely, intimate time together. As a husband and wife, talking. And she was relaying relaying to to me the the hardships of the day. And I was sharing with her, 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 you know, the troubles of the day. And and we, we realized that we have each other, and we have Jesus. Otherwise, the end of that day could be so much different, isn't it? She will end up frustrated, I will end up frustrated. The kids will go early to bed because you want them out of the way. Can you see the two circles? There are two circles. We'll see what, what else we got in there. What about when we could become angry with each other? Mm. When there's quarrels and fights? What happens there? Pride wants to make to take dominion over us, isn't it? We have to run to the Lord. We have to actually make this emergency escape. If we feel angry and upset with each other, we have to understand that this is not the workings of the, the Lord, it's the workings of the enemy. And we have to make sure that we understand that very, very quickly we have to put our hands down, put our pride down, and run to the Lord and say, Lord, help us to be sincere in our sorry. So, the Lord, this is mainly the principle that we want you to understand today. As we love our wives, they will react. They are that tender flower that they need love, to be shown love, and they will come up to life and they will respect the husband. And the husband will get that touch on the shoulder and that orange juice and say, you're doing a great job, dear. Soon you'll be ready to build up a whole extension in the house. And the husband will react and say, wow, she is with me. She is supporting me. She loves me. She respects me. That's, that's um, one thing I, I, wanted, I did wanted to uh, bring across as... as um, 
as we are a couple, as, as we are meant to be one, um, a counsel that uh, Eve was given uh, in the Garden of Eden. Um, it reads in uh, a book, um, Truth About Angels, how are we meant to be supporting our husband, how are we meant to uh, actually, um, uh, the Bible says, you know, that, that she was not to leave his side, remember? Um, and here, it says in the spirit of prophecy, it says that angels cautioned Eve not to separate from her husband in her employment. So this is not his employment, but in our employment. For she might be brought in contact with this fallen foe, the enemy. If separated from each other, they would be in greater danger than if both were together. The angels charged them to closely follow the instructions God had given them in reference to the tree of knowledge. For in perfect obedience, they were safe. And the fallen folk could not have access to them when they were together. It's the unity. We need the unity. It's when we are the strongest. When, you know, if, and I think we can, um, we can still, you know, he can still do, be working in the office or working in, with a car and I could be inside, like physically separated, but spiritually united. We have to be together so the enemy cannot um, break us, cannot get to us. Hmm. This uh, scripture there in Ephesians 4, 26 says, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. I remember many times that we got hold of this Bible verse once we learned of it. And it will be one o'clock in the morning and none of us is sleeping. Because you don't want to sin, right? You don't want to break this, this, this verse here. So I will be proud enough not to say sorry, but I'm not sleeping. I'm not sleeping because the Bible says, don't go to sleep, you know, on your anger. And I knew, you know, when, when, you, when you know that the, the person next to you is not sleeping either? And then you realize it's 3 o'clock in the morning and you're saying sorry, you're crying, you're apologizing, and you realize, wow, we could have done this at 5 o'clock in the afternoon and have about five hours of sleep by, by now. The quicker we understand this, I, I share with some people, there are people out there that, that can go for a whole week ignoring this verse, for a whole week. It's not just one day, two days, for a whole, I heard of people that they can actually live in the same house, sleep in the same bed, and not talk to each other and give the cold shoulder treatment for a whole month and even longer. The Lord wants to go and, can you see urgency here? Run to the Lord. Run to the Lord. Run quickly. Do it at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. It's much Before better than 3 o'clock. the sun goes down, it says. That's right. Much better than 3 o'clock at night in the morning. You, you will rest better. You will definitely rest better. Let fathers and mothers make a solemn promise to God whom they profess to love and obey that by His grace they will not disagree between themselves but will in their own life and temper manifest the spirit that they wish their children to cherish. We have heaven in our houses. Heaven is placed in our houses at our own reach for our children to see and experience heaven. That's what it is. That's what that, is, that verse is actually saying. Okay, we'll, um, we'll probably, I don't know, yep, that's it. We, we pretty much um, finished with, with that. Just final points, some final points. We mentioned this morning about the bad news of the news. My wife and I, and we're not sharing this for boasting. Please, don't take it as we, we are boasting on it. We've been without watching television for about 
close to 10 years now. I wouldn't know how I can find more time for my family if now I introduce television in my house and television programming. I'm talk, I mean, we, we watch like, like spiritual things and all that on a DVD player. But I wouldn't have a clue how we will be able to manage a life of family if I introduce normal commercial television in the house and if I spend time watching that television. I don't know how people do it, honestly. I mean, it goes beyond my, my understanding. We wouldn't be able to. We already find it hard trying to keep up without it. So this is just a final comment. I believe it's because it is important. And we, I think, we also have to be careful. No, it's low battery. A low battery. Um, we have to be careful because good things can also prevent us from the best things. And I think the, en the enemy also put something good in there, and that's Christian television. Hmm. Uh, yes, it can be good. You know, we can uh, get a spiritual growth, but if that is going to prevent us from spending time with each other, it becomes no good. We can waste a lot of time on spiritual things. I have seen many people doing it. I have seen people that were struggling to find time for their family, and in the same, at the same time, they were, they were wasting time listening to sermons. Now, is that bad? Is listening to sermons bad? No. But do it while you're traveling. Do it when you have that spare time. But if you use time that meant to be dedicated to the family, that blessing of that sermon is becoming a curse to your family. Do you understand what I, what I mean? Like, I'm not saying that the sermons are bad. I'm a preacher. <laughs> what we're saying here is that we need to be temperance even in the Christian media. We can watch a lot of that and at the same time not spend enough time with the loved ones. And we think we're getting spiritually fed, but it's just information based. It's not experientially based on the one to one relationship with our wife and children. So we wanted to emphasize that because there, are, there is somebody there that wants to take our time from our family. And there's not much time. Hmm. Uh, I know you are aware, the Lord uh, is impressing us everywhere, wherever we go, isn't it? He is coming. He's at the door. And the only time now we really have to treasure is family time. We have to have our families ready to meet the Lord as a complete, you know, husbands, wives, and all our children, not some. And, uh, and I think that is our main ministry as parents. That is our first ministry. And uh, we can be, Oscar can be going to Bible studies and knocking doors. But the Lord has shown him as well that first he has to have time for his family and after comes the visitation outside. Hmm. The picture that we want to place in our wall is the picture of our family, of our wives and husbands and children. A complete picture of what the Lord can do to us and with us as a family. So we want to now invite you all to kneel down with us as we close this uh, small um, worship presentation. Uh, before, before we oh, do sure. that, uh, we brought some um, little books that you are all welcome to take along. Um, there's um, some on reconnecting about family, about parenting, um, and other little things. Please feel free to take one, two, three, because there's, there's different kinds. So if you want to take one of each, go ahead and take it. Uh, it's just, you know, th little things that maybe, you know, we haven't touched, but they're really good. They're really good for our, our growth. So please feel free. Take Amen. It. All right, so um, we invite you to, to kneel down with us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you because you have a plan for our families. We thank you because you have impressed us, 
impressed us to, to come here today and learn about that plant a bit more. Lord, we know that we have a lot to learn and a lot to walk. But Lord, we always relied on the promise that you will never leave us, never forsake us, Father. That you have a plan for us as individuals and for us as a family, for us as a church, and for us as a people. Lord, we thank you because you have placed the family, the husband and the wife, to be the image of heaven for our children. We want, Lord, the law of respect, the law of ten tenderness, the law of love always on our lips as we rely to each other so our children can see heaven behind the doors of our home. Bless each one of us here. Bless our families so we can bless others by a practical example. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen.